Hello, my name is Robert Ryder. I am a professor of urology at UCLA School of Medicine and UCLA Health, and I am the director of the Prostate Cancer Program and chief of the Division of Urological Oncology. I'm here to talk to you today about a uh, new program at UCLA where we are using the most advanced forms of molecular imaging of prostate cancer to help guide us surgically to remove any sites of spread of disease or metastatic disease. So PSMA PET imaging is, uh, is something that we've been doing at UCLA for almost seven years right now, and was recently FDA approved uh, in 2022. It's now uh, gaining a greater acceptance worldwide, very much in part uh, because of the work that we've done at UCLA over the past seven years that led to the FDA approval. So what is PSMA imaging? PSMA imaging is a form of uh, imaging in which we can identify any site of prostate cancer based on the presence of this gene called PSMA, or prostate-specific membrane antigen, on the surface of a cancer cell. So it enables us to really uh, see uh, where prostate cancer might be in the body much better than we ever could before, and it really is changing the way that we see and manage this disease. And I'll just show you right here on the, uh, the right, this is a patient who had a traditional bone scan to see if he had metastatic disease to his bones. And you can see that he indeed has metastases to his rib and his shoulder. But with the newer form of PSMA PET imaging, you can see unfortunately that this man has much more widespread disease. And that is because this test is so much more sensitive than our traditional imaging. And so we were able to see uh, much more. And consequently, nowadays, we are finding more men who have one or two or three sites of metastatic disease, even at the earliest points uh, after diagnosis or after a patient may have a recurrence of their cancer after radiation or surgery. So just a couple of slides on PSMA PET imaging. Uh, again, this is a test that's approved for the identification of sites of metastatic disease uh, in men who have had prior treatment for prostate cancer and have a recurrence. And the question we clinicians always have is, where is the disease? And if we can find it, can we actually target it for treatment? So this is uh, some work from uh, the uh, paper that we published together with the University of California, San Francisco and UCLA, showing that depending on the level of PSA or prostate specific antigen in the bloodstream, we could detect uh, spread of disease or the location of disease in anywhere from 40 to 100% of men. Uh, before the advent of this imaging test, we could never identify the site of disease really until the PSA was much higher. So this is radically changing what we see and how we see it. In addition to men who have a recurrence after radiation or surgery, it is also useful in men who have newly diagnosed disease, particularly what we call high risk disease. That is disease that we believe can be particularly aggressive. And uh, what this study that we published shows is that in 40% uh, of men who had disease outside of the prostate, this test enabled us to actually see it and localize it. And this is, while not perfect, is much better than the 5 to 10% that we historically could detect. So the question has arisen, what do we do if a man has, on a PSMA PET scan, has two or three deposits of cancer, most commonly in the lymph nodes in the pelvis, which is a common area where prostate cancer spreads to. Before uh, the advent of PSMA, we would not identify this disease, but now that we see it, the question is how can we treat it? And the two ways to treat it are either to target it with specific radiation, and then the other potential way is to actually remove it surgically uh, or robotically. Uh, so the question is, for men with a limited number of metastases, we call this oligometastatic disease, one to three sites of disease, can surgery be used to remove cancerous lymph nodes in men with newly diagnosed or recurrent prostate cancer? And until the advent of PSMA, uh, PS, the, the current technology that we're starting to do here at UCLA uh, and is being done in some places in Europe, it really wasn't very possible. So this is, a, uh, this is a paper that was published by another group, and what they showed is that this is a man who had a PSMA PET scan, and you see where the arrow's pointed here. That was a single site of disease in a lymph node. The surgeon said, okay, we're gonna go 
ahead, we're going to see if we can remove this because we know pretty much where it's located. And as this example shows, the patient underwent surgery, and unfortunately, the surgeons did not locate it because after surgery, it was still there. And the reason is because we have hundreds of lymph nodes in this area, and it's very difficult for a surgeon to tell which lymph node might have cancer from which uh, lymph node might not. Uh, and then when they, they actually uh, looked, they could actually demonstrate that this was a common occurrence that the surgeon was unable to find the site of disease and consequently the surgery did not work. So now the question is, can we use a newer advanced technologies to do the same thing, to go in surgically, but now actually use the PSMA, the probe that we used in the PET scan, can we use it actually to find the cancer at the time of surgery in the operating room? And this is called radio-guided surgery. So the question is, can radio-guided surgery be used to remove cancerous lymph nodes? Now, what is this? So I told you about PSMA PET, which is the test we use to diagnose it. And this is this uh, thing over here. It's called a probe or a tracer. Uh, PSMA, there are two, uh, two different uh, forms of this uh, tracer that can be used by the nuclear medicine doctors. But what's done is that this little molecule that binds to the prostate cancer cell is linked to a, uh, to a, a proton emitting a radioisotope, either gallium or fluorine 18. That releases what are called beta positive positrons, which can then be detected on a PET scan. Now to do this in an operating room, uh, there's no way to detect these emissions uh, in a patient's body uh, with uh, a handheld tool or a robotically held tool. So there's another molecule also binds to PSMA on the surface of prostate cancer cells, but in this case, it's labeled with a different radioisotope that emits a gamma, gamma rays. And gamma rays have been used in medicine for 100, probably 100 years. Uh, and it's because uh, there are probes that can detect a gamma emission or a, ga a gamma signal, uh, and then they could conceivably be used in an operating room setting. And it turns out there are, there are handheld probes that a surgeon can use. And now uh, we, uh, together with uh, 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 some partners, have developed uh, robotically held instruments that we can use to identify a gamma signal in the body. And another important uh, topic that I'm not going to be discussing today, but it's very exciting, is again using the PSMA molecule but in this case, uh, linking it to a therapeutic radioisotope, so an isotope that can actually kill cancer cells, uh, the most common one being ca called lutetium. And this was just approved for the management of patients with advanced prostate cancer. So this is how it works. A patient has a PSMA PET scan, as shown here. If there's a site of disease that's located, the patient then uh, plans to have surgery. One day before the surgery, we give this new probe called PSMA INS, and this is the gamma probe with technetium. And then one day later, the patient goes to the operating room, and here this is a handheld probe, but the surgeon is using this probe to detect a signal which can be identified or can be heard or seen by like a Geiger counter, basically. And then the lymph node can be removed, and then the surgeon uh, or the assistants can test the lymph node on the table to confirm that, indeed, it's emitting a gamma signal and that that actually is a prostate cancer uh, lymph node. So that's the way it works. So I'm just going to show a few cases uh, before we finish this webinar. So this is uh, the, one of the first cases that we did. This patient here you can see he had, this is his technetium scan, so this is done the day before the surgery. And basically what we did is we confirmed that the patient had this lymph node seen here in yellow and this one seen here. Um, and this, this is the same thing seen uh, in a different way, but you can see that there are a couple of different uh, positive signals. So because of this, then a day later, the patient was taken to the operating room. And nowadays we do all these surgeries robotically, uh, so we don't need to make a big incision. And we, uh, we have a probe that can be manipulated by the robotic arms as shown here. And basically in the operating room, the surgeon sitting here can guide this probe to the area of interest and using it can sense or detect where the signal is coming from and then remove it. 
then on the back table, confirm that it's real and even go back in afterwards with the same probe and make sure that there's no residual signal because sometimes even though we only see one lymph node on the scan, there could be other lymph nodes in the region that we might be able to detect with this probe. So this patient underwent surgery. He had uh, two, uh, two sites of lymph nodes that were identified, confirmed to be prostate cancer with the probe removed and then confirmed afterwards that there were two lymph nodes as seen on the scan beforehand, confirmed to be cancer. And this patient's PSA afterwards uh, de declined more than 90%. Here's another case. Uh, this is one of my favorite cases in a way because it shows the power of this new technology. So this is a patient who had surgery a few years ago. And then unfortunately, his PSA started to rise. It was actually only 0.2, very, very low, right at the threshold at which we could possibly detect uh, the, the location of cancer with a, PET, uh, with a PSMA PET scan. And indeed, you can see with the yellow arrow, arrow here, one single site, very small lymph node, and it's located in a very hard to get area because it's located in fatty tissue near the rectum, not a place we usually look for cancerous lymph nodes. So we said, well, let's see if we can do it. We took the patient to the operating room. He got the technetium PSMA probe the day beforehand. Uh, we used the uh, intraoperative probe and we were able to identify this lymph node even within all of this fatty tissue, very small, four millimeters, and it was confirmed to be positive. And it's the only lesion that we found in this man. And his PSA three months later was zero, indicating that we removed everything visible uh, and hopefully it will remain zero and he'll, he'll be cured, or at least we will be delaying, we hope, uh, his disease. And then I think the final case I'm gonna show is right here with a little video clip. This was a man also who had surgery in the past, uh, and then came back, his PSA rose all the way to 3.1. And you can see here on his PSMA PET scan, he's got actually quite a large lymph node located right here. This is the, uh, the, the tracer that was given the day before surgery, confirming that, it's th that we can detect it. He was then taken to the operating room, and in this exact area, we actually found four lymph nodes that were positive. So we took out one. We still sensed that there was something coming from another lymph node. We removed that and kept doing it until there was nothing residual afterwards. Um, now, this patient, I'll show the video clip, but he did very, very well. He went home the morning after surgery, uh, but he did come back three months later and his PSA was still detectable. And we got a new PET scan and he had a small lesion that had not been seen before in one of his bones. That's being treated with radiation, but the, all the sites of lymph nodes uh, were, 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 were gone. So we had removed everything. So we're hoping, of course, that with uh, the radiation to this one site of disease in his bone, he will do well. And this is just a little video clip so this is the robotically held probe that I've been talking to you about. And you can see with the robotic instruments, we're manipulating it. In the same screen, we actually have the gamma signal that we can detect. And you can see here, it's really, really hot with signals greater than 151, way above baseline. And this is actually, turns out that this is the lymph node right here. This is the one that we removed, then we went back in. We still saw some more, or we, uh, we sent some more. We took that out as well and then ultimately we were able to remove everything from this area. So this shows how we do this actually in the operating room. So I'll just show you a little data and then I'll conclude. So those are some of the cases that we've already done at UCLA. Uh, we're doing them almost every few weeks now. Uh, and this is uh, one of two studies that have been published by groups in, the, in, in Europe, both in the Netherlands and in Germany where this uh, procedure was first uh, developed. And this shows the response in PSA uh, after surgery. And you can see here that most men, at least half of men, are getting declines in their PSA blood tests between 50 and 100%. Uh, and uh, this is very promising. Another paper from a larger series that was done in Hamburg, Germany, from a colleague of mine, Tobias Moore. Here he shows uh, using the same exact technology, uh, but this was done with an open surgery approach, not robotic. You can see here how many men actually had a PSA decline of 90 to 100%. And he was able to show that the, uh, that the response was predicated on having fewer sites of disease. So if a patient had three or fewer sites of disease, they were much more likely to 
uh, achieve this dramatic response than patients who had uh, more uh, disease present. And this shows basically the longer term outcomes. This is recurrence-free survival after the salvage surgery in this German series. And you can see here that there are some number of men, probably 25 or 30 percent, who appear to be cured by the surgery alone. But in the other cases, the time until the patient needed a new treatment averaged three years. So the idea is that a, a fairly straightforward in a surgery such as this may delay the need for any additional other treatments such as chemotherapy, hormone therapy, et cetera, and a patient still can be treated with radiation or other modalities if needed. This is still in an experiment in a way. Uh, we are the only site that I'm aware of in the U.S. doing this right now. I'm sure more will be doing it eventually. Um, but it is a, a trial to see whether or not we can use the advanced forms of imaging to really improve the outcomes of men with prostate cancer. So I want to uh, conclude by saying the introduction of PSMA PET scanning is really redefining how we see and how we stage this disease. We're finding more men, unfortunately, who have small sites of disease beyond their prostate. PSMA imaging really can replace the alternative conventional forms of imaging. Radio-guided surgery is feasible, and the early results are positive. Uh, the benefit does remain unknown long-term, and I need to stress that. Uh, and it needs to be compared to other forms of treatment. Uh, but we are learning how to do this, refining how we do it, and I think it's an area of great promise uh, that, uh, that offers patients a, a single treatment uh, that may delay the need for any subsequent treatment uh, potentially forever. I want to thank, of course, all of the patients who have enrolled in our study and continue to be enrolled. Without them, we can't do any of this work, uh, and uh, we do our best to treat them uh, compassionately and, and, uh, and thoroughly. And then my team, this is just a small uh, part of the team. Uh, this is led by Jeremy Calais, Dr. Calais, who's a professor of nuclear medicine at UCLA. Uh, Magnus Dahlboom, who works in nuclear medicine and is a physicist and, uh, and does much of the physics work that we need. And one of my colleagues in urology, Dr. Joe Shirk, uh, uh, and then many, many more students, postdoctoral students, uh, technicians in the operating room, et cetera. So I want to thank you for your attention. And uh, we are always uh, available to answer any questions that arise from, from the listening audience about this technology. Thank you.